Good morning, YouTube. Um, we are going to be doing the battery relocation on the Evo to move the battery from the front to the rear. Um, I'm thinking this is where it's going to be. I might choose a different spot on this side. We'll see it when I get there. Um, here's a shot of all the materials I'll be using. I got the Taylor battery box, which I only ordered with all the mounting equipment because I ended up sourcing out the cable locally at a cheaper price pro tip um, as far as the front side of the, of the Evo I'll be using the Evo 10 distribution box here's where all the connectors from the current battery will connect to and then they'll go back to the back and then through the car to the trunk and to the battery. So this is going to be a step by step of how to do this. First get an idea of where you want it. I might do it here because in this little panel, let me take this off, is the windshield wiper fluid. And since I live in Florida, it rains and this is kind of required down here. So it'll either be here or probably in this flat area right here. I was thinking of going into the center, but I kind of want to throw the weight more to the light, to the lighter corner of the, of the vehicle. So I'm more leaning towards here or here. Chances are I'll probably choose this side, but I'll go a little farther back to allow me to open this up and to fill it up with a funnel if I need to. But first and foremost, the prep work. Um, I have the cable that I'm going to be adding the copper lugs to. As you can see over here, I picked up some all solid copper 2 gauge lugs that I'll be using on the cable itself. Some brand new battery terminals. These are marine grade, which are plenty for an automotive application. Um, so now the first step is to remove everything that you don't need, which is going to be the carpet and the back carpet. Because way back here, there should be a little hole that allows me access towards the inside of the Evo. Now with the actual floor carpet out the way, over here is going to be two screw type style pull out pins. And I believe down here, there's a push pin one, which you're going to have to get like a, a little lever on the inside and pull it out and it should pop out right out. Um, Essentially, I just want to get this side of the carpet out because um, I'm only I only need access to that part because if you see back here, this bolt back here, that is where I'm going to be grounding the battery to, which works out well because if I put the battery here, which is a nice solid area, um, I won't have to make the ground that long, and we all know the shorter the ground, the better the, the connection took out all the plastic lining well sorry carpet lining um, as you can see that is the hole in which I will be running the cable into the cabin or down there um, depending on which one I decide because I still have to, I'm still thinking if I should put an inline fuse say um, probably a 120 or a 150 amp and either tying it here then running the, the ground here I mean the positive here or putting it either up here or there's a lot of places that where I can actually put it in hell even back there there's a there's a hole that I can run a screw and a bolt to and whatnot um, yeah, so from here on out, I'm just going to clean up this area because it's really dirty. And it looks like there's some rust here, but I just think it's surface rust because there's nothing under. I just, I just took a look under the car. Chances are something spilled up here and whatnot. Um, alright, so the next step is clean up and then test fitting where I'm going to be putting the battery. Clean up the area completely. Um... Filled out, find out my uh, where I'm going to be drilling my two pilot holes. This is pretty much where the holes fell to because once I have the box fully assembled, the top corner is really close to touching up here. Now, 
if I pushed it a little farther back, it would in fact be touching here. And we all know Evos vibrate. And I'm pretty sure the box will be tapping on here and driving me nuts later down the line. So I'm going to avoid that whole issue and give myself a few millimeters from here. Push it forward slightly. Um, and that's pretty much where those two holes lined up because the box is also really close to touching over here. And the same thing on that side. And that's also going to give me enough space to fill the washer fluid if I ever need to. Because I live in Florida and it just rains randomly. So um, yeah, so now what I'm going to do is get my drill, drill out the two pilot holes, uh, get the box all set up, and then start routing the wire. These two holes, I ended up going under the car and making sure there's nothing that I'm going to be drilling through, which is pretty good. Because right now, right here, there's a frame rail that runs from here all the way to the front. Um, this area is clear. This is just a metal, a flat metal tray, which honestly, up right under here is where the exhaust is. Same thing with right over here. Um, this part might be a little weird to drill because it is at an angle, so I'm going to take my time on it. But there's enough room for me to actually not hit the frame rail here, which is a great a great thing to happen because if I were to push it even farther this way I'm going to be probably running into this area and I'm going to be losing out on my jack which is fine because eventually down the line is I'm not going to be running a spare in here so that for now since this car every now and then does go on the streets I'm going to need that especially with South Florida roads as you can see the holes are drilled out but I just noticed by doing a quick test fit, let me get this rod, that the rod supplied with the kit is the same exact hole, a uh, size, uh, well it's just ever so slightly bigger than the holes that I just drilled. So I'm going to have to expand the holes ever so slightly, ever so slightly, uh, to make the rod go through. Uh, once it goes through, then I just fill in with the, with the nuts and the washers that are supplied in the kit and the box part of the of the installation is done then it'll be onto the wires so right now I have the tray in place the tie rods are in I guess that's what you want to call them the tie downs tie downs yeah they're bolted under the car I gave about uh, I'm gonna say an inch and a half of extra of extra length on the bottom just in case um, they're sandwiched in the same way as you can see there where you use the supplied washer and then the nut between the tray and then the same thing on the underside of the car same thing on the other side right now these are just hand tight uh, just for placement really um, and yes all that stuff there you see it's sweat because it's, it's freaking hot here in South Florida and I'm in a garage which makes it even worse um, alright so now with this done I'm going to do a quick test fit with the box put it all in there see how it looks maybe adjust the length of the rods ever so slightly um, and then from there I did actually one thing I did notice is there's a little gasket right here I'm gonna peel this up chances are it's a, it's a nice hole which it feels like there's a hole under there and that will be a really good place for the installation of the battery breather now this is really only if you're taking it to the track drag strip Hell, I think even autocross, SCCA requires this if you have the battery in the trunk. You might have to check locally, but most of them do. Um, and then from there, you can just use the supplied rubber gaskets and the breather cable for it. Oh, the, the angle for it, I mean, sorry. And that will allow you to pass that inspection. Um, and then from there, I'm going to go unbolt that little bolt while I still have access to it nicely. Uh, shave off any paint that's on the surface. Because that will be for my ground. Um, so once that's shaved, I'm going to unroll that cable. And get to wiring. Because I went ahead and to that one little hole. And I kind of do, kind of don't. Cause it's right back here but I kind of don't want to take off these back seats because they're a pain in the butt this is way easier this just pops up because there's two little clips on the bottom but um yeah so chances are I'm going to route it through that little hole bound down there and then run it across into the cabin and then alongside the, the bottom 
all the way up through the front in through the, the firewall hole by the by the pedals into the fender and then around the fuse box into where the battery currently is and from there I believe that is the full installation and then obviously I'm gonna have to check everything but for the most part that's what it is so I'm gonna go ahead and continue my work here next thing I did I don't know if you can see let me light it up pretty well I stripped the paint off where that one bolt is that will allow me a good ground contact because the battery is right there um, alright so now what I'm gonna do is like the box is gonna look good in that position so now what I'm gonna do is start preparing the cable for the routing I might just un unravel it already in the car stretch it out get the placement where I need it to be um, mark where I have to cut because right now I got hooked up because I got 28 feet of cable and from everything that I've read the Evos really only require around 21 feet um, and that is including the ground cable so um, I'll let you know the exact figure that I get because sure, I'm gonna be doing a, the riding just slightly different so I might consume maybe an extra foot or two um, but either way, once the installation is done, I'll just let you know exactly how many square feet I have left. I mean, not square feet, but feet I have left. And then we'll have a, a, pretty good, a pretty good idea of how many feet you might need when you ever proceed to do this type of installation on your own Evo. Everybody, so we're back to this part now. I'm routing the wires in. First thing you gotta do, remove the little plastic skid plate. Just pops off, pretty simple. Then remove the side, which has uh, where'd it go? Let me get my flashlight. This type of push pin. It's just a simple one. Don't go too crazy on it, pull it in out, because you might break it. And these are a pain in the butt to find, too. So now, once you get all this done, you can see the, the ECU iron harness over here. These are the pedals. See? Two pedals. And up here, let's see if I can get a good shot. Let me light it up first. You are going to see, hopefully... A plastic oh, I can't put my hand on it but it's right there in the center I'll point it out with the with like a little arrow on the video that is where the cable is gonna route through and it's gonna go through there and it'll pop out in the wheel well over here once it's through there you're gonna route it up and go over here go up the fender through here and you'll come out over here, where these cables are over here. Once they're out through here, ride it if you want. I'm probably gonna ride it to make it a little cleaner under here. And ride it over here where I'm gonna be putting my Evo 10 distribution block. And then this bad boy coming out, going to the back. And then, ugh, come on, lift up. I will be doing this lovely thing, which is gonna be a, not really a pain in the butt. But it'll be an interesting little thing. So let me finish routing up that wire. Oh, and by the way, 28 feet is a lot. Because I'm pretty sure I'll be using this much. But look how much left I have in the trunk. So 28 is a lot. That 21 feet estimate was probably dead nuts as far as I'm concerned. Um, we won't know until the very end. Anyway, so once I route this stuff, I'm going to go start crimping the wires. Making sure everything is all nice and nice and set. I'll finish all the wiring, and then the very last step would be setting up the distribution box, because the last thing you want is to mess up the distribution box, and then you have a thirty-two thousand pound brick for the time being, anyways. This part managed to be a huge pain in the butt, just because that grommet that's way up there is extremely tight. So I had to pull the entire grommet out, well push it through the cabinet into here, cut a small sliver into the grommet, slide in the cable, and replace the grommet. Now if you know anything about these waterproof grommets, they're a huge pain in the butt to even do. So this took way longer than what I had to. Also things were popping out all over the place. Um, and well, yeah, so I finally got it through. So now I'm going back to setting up all the wires. I'm going to route the 
the wire, clean it up, um, position everything, and then start to snipping and crimping. I finished all the crimping. Bam. Now before you say anything, yes, I will be putting heat shrink on these. I ended up making the mistake of buying the correct size heat shrink for the cable. But it is too small to wrap around the the wide end of the, uh, the copper lugs. So I'm going to have to go back and buy one size larger. But yeah, one of them was able to work and is the one that I use as the ground way back there. So you can see the wiring is through there. That's all set. That's all set. Cable's going through the inside, coming out through here. It's going to run all along the back side of the seats. Let's go back to this side. And it'll come out through here. I'm going to run it all along the edge. Pretty self-explanatory from here on out. Boom, all the way through. And through the grommet on the side of the firewall. It comes out through here, all the way through here. Cable appears out of here, thumbs up, and boom. And yes, that one's missing heat shrink too. Now the next part is the final step, the battery. Um, this is going to be a little bit different. Let me see if I can do this with the flashlight. Let me pop this off. All right. And that's all done. All right. So as you can see, here we have, let me see if I can clean it up a little. The little mini fuse box on the positive side of the battery. Now from here, there are four wires that come out. Alright, so that, as I was saying before, um, one of the cables here, let me see if I get my shot, goes to the fuse box, one goes to the ACD, one goes to the alternator, and the other goes to, I forget what. Yeah, either way, they're labeled with their amps. This one right here is 100, and that one says alt, goes to the alternator. This is the 60 one, this is for the ACD. The one on the bottom, if I can see it, that one. Let's see, that one right there is for, uh, I forgot what, not the ACD, something else, either way. That is another one that will probably be needing a 60. And then right here is the fuse box, which can be used and plugs into the 80 on the EVO 10 box because the EVO 10 has four 80s, one 120 and one 140. So technically the alternator can go to the 120, this one can go to 80, the smaller one here can go to, no the fuse one can go to 80 because I believe the largest one there is a 60 and then this one right here can go to the 140 at the top because I'm not sure exactly what that goes to. So just to be safe, I will be putting that to a larger one. Um, and then from there, it's pretty straightforward. I would have to cut the, this ground over here because it's not really needed anymore. And that will alleviate the problem with these engine intercooler pipes that are pressed up against the battery. So I'm usually scared to run hard because the engine will flex, things can move, this could pop off. And I've, I've, I've already had the lower pipe pop off once on the highway and it sucks. Got the battery out, battery tray out, everything is connected. Now I'm trying to figure out where I can mount this distribution block. I was hoping putting it here, but there's not enough room. So I might have to make a bracket that comes this way maybe. Or a bracket that comes off this, which are the two bolts for the battery. Um, for now, it'll be on this little bracket. I don't think it'll be in the way for the time being. Um, once I get that bracket made, I'll replace it, fix all that up again. Um, Alright, so the next up is just to get the actual um, the distribution box all set up now. Here is the EVO 10 Fusible box or distribution box, whatever you want to call it. Now if you look closely, they're labeled. This one says 80 amps, 80 amps, 120 amps. 140 amps, which is the one up here, and oh, another one in the middle actually. Now that, now that I look at it, All right? Oh no, it's 80, 80, 120, 80, and then 140 at the top. Sorry about that. So 80, 80, 120, 80, 140 at the top. 
So I'm going to be getting the 100 of the alternator, putting it on the 120 right here. The 60 will be here. The other fuse box one will be here. And then the one that's unlabeled, I have no idea what it is, so I'm going to be putting it up here with a 140 amp. And then the final one over there comes up here. And then this wiring is all set up. Alright guys, so I got the box all made it up. This is how it ended up going. Um, yeah, still need heat shrink. Don't have to mention that. Um, I'm going to wait to cut this negative. Um, in, in all honesty, it's just, it's just grounded right here. But still, just in case something does go wrong. Um, Alright, so I'm going to move the battery so over here into the trunk. Put it all together, alarm should sound, scare the fuck out of me, and it should be good. This battery is in, not tied down just yet, but it's connected, alarm already sounded off, so it is getting powder, light is on inside, and let's see, oh Jesus, the seat's really far back. Ugh. Power is all going through. Alarm is on. Yeah, I gotta set you up. And she's awake. Everything seems to be in order. So now she's gonna tie down the battery, put all the plastic pieces back in. Put the seat back in and we'll be good to go. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, all plugged in. Car starts up fine. Haven't encountered any issues. Only thing is, the lid doesn't let me, well, this plastic doesn't let me close the lid. So I wanted to see what kind of workaround I have for that. All right, so in the meantime, thank you everybody for watching and catch you next time.